Welcome back to the channel, Marjoran Kilio. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. If you've been on my channel long enough, you know that I love, among other things, 80s guitar tones and gear. I've done several videos on the subject and a few specifically on 80s rack gear and tones. But fun fact, I've never had a rack rig. You see, I started playing guitar in the mid 80s as a young kid, and by the time I was old enough to actually afford rack gear, it was already passe. But I'd actually forgotten that I did own one piece of rack gear, and I got it as a Christmas present in 1989, so I was about 13, and it was the Art SGE version one, not the Mach 2, that I got from the Musician's Friend catalog, which back then, Musician's Friend was a black and white, kind of newspapery type paper uh, catalog. It was all I used in eighth grade, kind of going into high school, and really it kind of defined my sound, whatever it was, back in that time period. And mind you, my sound back then was nothing great. I was young, I was green, I had no clue about gear or even what good guitar tone was. I think I just plugged it straight into like my PV solid state practice amp. But you know, I thought it sounded cool. It, it looked cool with all the buttons and uh, the black and the hot pink. And I actually held on to it up until a few years ago when I got rid of it, and I wish I hadn't, obviously. But by the magic of Reverb.com, I was able to score one for about 150 bucks, which is way less than what it cost new back in 1989. So no, these did not go up in value as time has passed. But in this video, I wanna plug it in, kind of for the first time in decades, and go through some of the sounds with you, see if I remember some of my favorite presets, and just play around with it now that I have more knowledge of how gear works and what good tone is. Because back then, I just picked a couple favorite presets and, and stuck with them. I didn't really go into the menu. So a quick overview on the Art SGE. It is a stereo multi-effects unit. And I thought it was designed specifically for guitar because I saw it in all the guitar magazines. But there's actually some presets in it designed for, I guess, vocals and drums and like stereo mix bus things for the, for the studio. Uh, but it does have stereo ins and stereo outs. When I was a kid, I had no means of doing anything in stereo. I always just used one cable in with my guitar, one cable out to my practice amp. But today, luckily, I have it running in stereo for the first time in my life. Still guitar straight into uh, the left input and then taking the stereo out into this GFI cab Zeus, which mimics like a stereo speaker setup. And then out of that into my audio interface, panned hard left and right. So hopefully we can get some really cool stereo sounds. So it has a blend of analog and digital effects. The compressor, equalizer, distortion, harmonic exciter, expander gate, envelope filter are the analog effects, I believe. And then you've got pitch shifting, flange, chorus, panning, reverb, and delay, which are digital. And I just read something in, in an old review online that said that the processing power of this thing is so minimal that certain effects you can't combine because it doesn't have enough processing power. Okay, so to keep it true to my 13-year-old uh, glorious tone, I'm using my very first electric guitar, which is a, a 1986 Japanese Fender Strat. It's been modified a little bit, but it's pretty close to what I was using back then. I got the uh, Art SGE turned on, so this actually does not have a power switch. I don't know why they didn't put it on, but basically when you plug it in, it, it powers up, and it automatically goes to patch one. It says, Rock Concert Guitar, and here's how it sounds. <laughs> It's got a little bit of stereo delay. That's the first time I'm hearing it that way. <clears throat> so let's go through the menu and see what effects are in here. So I believe you hit edit mode and then I remember. Yeah, so it's got exciter, harmonic exciter, EQ, compressor, distortion. So right now it's on turbo distortion. I believe there's a couple different distortion uh, types. So you've got overdrive one, overdrive two, overdrive three, distortion one, distortion one, two, and three, turbo overdrive one. Okay, 
interesting. So there's overdrive, three versions of overdrive, three versions of distortion, three versions of turbo overdrive, and then three versions of turbo distortion. Wow. Expander. When I was 13, I had no idea what like harmonic exciter was or what an expander did. And then it's got digital delay. I never used this patch. I, I, I have a feeling I remember which presets I like. On the left, on the right side, sorry, you've got some sliders that control the input level, output level, and then the mix, which if I wanted to go 100% wet, so if I had like a wet dry rig, uh, I could slide it all the way to 100% wet, but usually I kept it in the middle, and there's a notch in the middle that keeps it locked in there. So when I was using this back in the day, I always kept it in the middle. I didn't know what I was doing. So I'm just going to go through some of the patches and kind of comment on what I recall. Dynacomp wah. So that's like an, an auto wah with a compressor. I never used that. It was fun. You know, keep in mind when you're a 13, this is like a toy. When you're 13 and you're just starting getting into guitar and effects, this was a fun toy because I had all these effects at my disposal that I never had played around with before. Concert guitar wah. <clears throat> so this is auto wah with uh, delay. Monster guitar. I do remember this patch. So this is the first patch that we're hearing the pitch shifting. And I think if I turn the mix, then you got all, you know, um, the low octave. And now I'm remembering, so <laughs> when I stopped using this for guitar, I used this kind of in my home studio, but I also hooked this up. So I remember one Halloween, uh, I hooked up a microphone into this, which I don't think you're supposed to do, into my PV amp, and then I would sit above the front door. We had like a little alcove above the front door and point the, the speaker out the window. And when kids would come up to get, uh, you know, the candy, I would like have my, my vocal mic hooked up with the pitch shifting on and just kind of like say, don't be afraid, come and get some candy. Something stupid like that. Brit Ooh, so British stack. Okay, now I remember preset five. This was one of my go-to sounds. It, it, it really doesn't sound that great with this guitar, but we'll hang with it for a little bit and then I'll switch over to like my Tyler or something. I think I like this patch because it was just the distortion with a little bit of like early reflection uh, reverb. Which I think I can dial out with this mix knob. So when mix is on zero, you're just hearing the distortion, I think. There's obviously a gate happening here. I mean, it's not great, but it's not bad. So I didn't realize I could dial it in this well with the mix knob, but um, like here's my standard preset that I would always play around with. But if I dial the mix down a little bit, Like right when it starts getting that reverb effect. It actually sounds pretty good. That's not bad. I would use that in a pinch. British Thunder, uh, Metal Concert. So I'm hearing panning left and right with the delays. 
It's not very metal sounding, that's for sure. Turbo flange. I remember this. I remember, I'm remembering numbers of the presets that I liked. And I think this was one that I, I liked. I don't think I ever used it practic, you know, on a gig. And I do recall using this on a couple gigs, like dances. I, I remember like an eighth grade dance and then possibly like a talent show. Uh, I remember using uh, this rack on. <laughs> Glistening chorus. Ooh, that's kind of more my style. So I'm hearing a lot of compression. And again, I feel like it sounds a little bit better if you dial the mix back. I always had it way too high. Right 12 string is up. And I did record that. That was Tesla love song. I do remember using this and using that patch to mimic a 12 string to play the intro to, to love song and recording it on a four track, which I wish I had that recording now, but uh, this is taking me back. Rotating Leslie. Maybe it was this sound that I used for the Tesla song. I can't remember. It was one of those, it was either the Leslie or the 12 string. Concert Leslie, Turbo Leslie. That's fun. It's fun in stereo. But I do, okay, so I do want to switch to a, a better guitar. So now I have the best of both eras. Beautiful Tyler Studio Elite HD. Yeah, it sounds cooler with a humbucker, man. I wish I had a humbucker guitar back then. Guitar Jazz Hall. Here's a Jazz Hall guitar. That's the worst sounding jazz guitar I've ever heard. It's got distortion on it. Minimal. Nope, blues hall. Let's see if this is any better. If blues guitar sounds good in a concert hall. Really just dialing the mix makes it a little bit better. Chicken pluck. Is that supposed to be like a country thing? A rockabilly. But it almost sounds like a gated, it sounds like a gated reverb, right? Mm -hmm. 
Oh, this one. Number 25, English Tubes. I think... I like this one because it reminded me of Brian May's uh, guitar tone. I guess what I like about it, it has that room reflection. Electro fuzz tone. Ah, this is the riff that I played with this song. Night Demon Guitar. Rock Synth Fifth. So now we're getting into more of the pitch shifting stuff. Arpeggiator up. That, that's pretty bold and pretty impressive for for this time period and this uh, this processing. It's kind of got that even tidy effect. Downward. Okay, so now we've got a series of patches uh, that are just reverbs. Dance drums reverb. There we go. Reverse reverb. Here's some stereo delay in chorus. That's not half bad. I'm not gonna lie. It's a little bit flubby, so I'm gonna actually try to, to, to make it usable for me. I'm gonna try to EQ it in a way. Uh, there we go, 100 hertz is up 3 dB. I'm gonna bring that all the way down. I want it a little bit spankier. Uh, 10k is up. You don't have a ton of control with the EQ. You've got like three uh, frequencies that you can tweak. You've got 100 hertz for the lows, 100k for I guess the mids, and then 10k for the highs. There's not a lot of in-between stuff, so you're kind of stuck with that. It goes up by three decibels, so it's the tweakability is very limited with this. Same with the compressor. I think you're limited to with percentages. It goes from 12% to 25% to 37%, 50, 60, so it jumps. That's as good as it's gonna get for me. Dream flange. The 
the stereo is kind of where it's at with this, and, and I can't believe for so long I used this mono. Really, the way you should be using this is in stereo. I think that's the strength of this particular unit. Sweet, clean jazz. Let's see how jazzy. That's more like it. That first jazz patch sucked. now flan funk rhythm which is a funny name because flan in the philippines and in mexico and stuff that's a really re nice dessert i always thought of uh filipino leche flan reverb so you should you really should have headphones on for this type of stuff but going left and right to me ooh jet lag slap yeah I used to do that Jimmy Page thing where it's like fun. Remember, this is 1989, so this is uh, futuristic for that time period. Ping pong delay, so it should go left and right. It's interesting how it, it moves, kind of, it fades out and then fades back in on the other side. So, starting here is when we start getting into more uh, of the overdrive patches. This one's called Warm Tube Blues. There's no tubes in here that I don't think there are. Oh, this one. Now, the, okay, so now I know. This is where I kind of ended up with as my main guitar patch. Tube full stack. Um, you know, in the beginning, it's funny how like the patches go. You kind of go through all the patches and you find your favorites. What I started with, if you remember, number five, which was the British stack. That was my first favorite. And then I believe 25, I can't believe I still remember these numbers. 25 was the English, English tube or whatever it's called. The, the Brian May sounding one. And then 90 became my favorite. The older I got. And later in the patch sequences. I thought it had more gain back then, and it's possible that I did tweak this uh, a little bit, so let's see if I can get it more gainy. Right now it's on distortion too, so... Distortion 3 is like less distortion. <laughs> That's weird. So the dis the second patch of each uh, of uh, overdrive type is always louder. So distortion two is going to be louder than one and three. Turbo overdrive. So turbo distortion seems to be the m the most gain of all those. 
So I probably pick Turbo Distortion too. And then right now the drive is only at 62%, so I probably put it all the way to 100. I definitely played this lick when I was 13. That was my tone. That was my sound. So the, the presets end at 99, and I'm pretty sure I didn't go past 90 for anything else. All right, guys, there you have it. That's what the original Art SGE from 1989 sounds like. Let me know what you guys think about this. Did it sound decent? If you owned one of these units back then, or maybe like the Mach 2 or the SGX versions, let me know down in the comments. I'm always curious to hear. If you enjoyed this video, please click that thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, guitar lessons and gear demos, click that subscribe button. Thanks again for watching. I'm RJ Ronquillo, and I'll see you in the next video.